Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Volatility Box Report from November 7th, 2019. We are TOSIndicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. Using our Volatility Box, we had a total of two trades that set up today, uh, which unfortunately was a total losing PL of negative 355. Uh, and so that was mostly caused by one trade, and this was in the bonds. Uh, Dick, in particular, if you're watching, I know you and I, we've had this same sort of issue on the bonds where we get stopped out for a tick. And so in tonight's video, we'll talk about how you can start to use Keats RSI uh, dynamic color indicator uh, to start to trade things like the bonds. Uh, and then we'll also use that to start to look at opportunities in gold uh, that may set up outside of that 6 to 7 a.m. hour that we're typically used to seeing. Right. And so using that same indicator, uh, we had another trade in gold uh, where uh, we had um, context around when to use the volatility box. And that was a really nice trade, which gave you a total P&L of 1230. Again, let's remember this is hypotheticals, but it is something that we can start to learn and apply in our trading starting next week, at least for those of you that like to be more a bit more aggressive. And you can see the effect that that had on the, the total P&L for today, right? You went from negative to positive, and that too pretty nicely positive, thanks to one trade in the gold futures using the, uh, the tools that you already have access to. Speaking of tools, we're also building a tool for stock traders where you can use the power of the volatility box, but on the entire stock universe. And so for all of our Futures Volatility Box members, you currently have free access to this separate tool through the end of November. And using it, we'll cover the one trade that we got today through our scans, which are shared in the scan tab of the Volatility Box. And here we had the opportunity to buy some uh, at the money put options with eight days to expiration. And we had close to a 39%, actually close to 40% gain in under an hour. And if you happen to have scaled out of your position slowly, uh, the most of your contracts, you got close to 100% gain. And that's using the power of the volatility box with some concrete trade rules. And you can start to do this day in and day out. And hopefully through all these videos, you started to see that the, the same sort of power applies here for those of you that like to trade stocks over futures or for us futures traders who uh, at times we don't always see opportunities. Well, now all of a sudden you're scanning 8,000 plus tickers. You're of course going to find some opportunities uh, that start to allow you for more entries. Also, before we get to charts, I'm going to take a few minutes to address a question we've now had several of you ask us over the past 24 hours. Apparently, in their nightly video yesterday, the Simpler Futures team showed off this indicator right here, and many of you emailed us wondering if this is the volatility box. The short answer is yes, this is in fact my code, but no, this is not the volatility box to be crystal clear. As a developer, it's really one of the nicest forms of flattery when other people use your code to generate ideas of their own. Right. I think most of you have noticed in our videos, we're all about collaboration. Collaboration is key. And I really enjoy the idea of sharing uh, ideas, insights with uh, our fellow members, uh, even our non-members, and just sharing things like our code. It's one thing to collaborate. And uh, whenever we do collaborate, I think we've done a pretty good job of making sure to give credit where credit is due. So things like the dynamic RSI indicator, Keith's name is a very first name in there. And we even send him the compliments that, you know, we get from our members because it's really him that created, he's the, the brainchild of that indicator, right? So I think that's one thing about collaboration, but it's another whole different thing to copy things line for line. And so one of our members happened to get a screenshot of the code where you can kind of see this, right? It's copied line for line. And you can see on the right hand side is my original version of the code, which I wrote way back in 2018. It's been almost two years since I wrote this code. And on the left hand side, you can see the indicator code for that indicator uh, where we have the same exact code, but just a different credit where they've taken out my credit, the author, and gone ahead and slapped their own name on it. It's like, come on, man, seriously? So anyways, yes, this is our code. For those of you that are using it, trying to use it, keep in mind that this is almost two years old. Uh, and I would use that version very cautiously if you are going to do that. And for our volatility box members, I hope you're feeling happy, feeling proud, and feeling more confident than ever in the tool. The tool is so well built that we're at the point right now where others are trying to use our base framework to try and get that same sort of edge. Except our real sauce, our secret sauce, is in our numbers, which luckily enough, you can't just copy from any website. Right. And so I think that's what keeps us uh, trading with an edge. And uh, w I think all of our volatility box members can tell you that we make far more than what the subscription fee is. And we're having a hell of a lot of fun doing it, especially with this new stock volatility box tool. So anyways, with all of that behind us, let's now move on to something a little bit more productive, like looking at charts. And we'll start with the crude oil futures. And so using our aggressive uh, volatility box test, that gave us permission to, to continue to use our aggressive volatility box. And we had our entry as price lamped into our volatility box here. 
right? And looking at Keats RSI candles, we see this go from red to orange, giving us permission to start to look here for an entry. Our stop was outside of the volatility box. We didn't get remotely close to hitting our stop, but we really didn't see the sort of fall through that we were expecting. And so you could take this contract off into the close for a slight gain. We ended up getting 10 cents per contract, really just covering commission. So 20 bucks, nothing too crazy. We can then uh, head on over to our bond features and we'll take you through the action here just sort of from the beginning. And so with our aggressive volatility box, we had permission to continue to use this as we hadn't breached either side's aggressive volatility box entry lines. We then saw uh, a breach at the edge of the hour, and this was free information for us. We're not looking at edge of hour entries, but this is really sort of the best case scenario for us, right? It's information that we don't even have to put any capital at risk to try and see. We saw that price didn't hold the aggressive volatility box, and that was then our free sign to switch on over to our conservative volatility box. And so using our conservative volatility box, we then had our entry as price slammed into our volatility box entry lines. Our stop was outside of the volatility box, and you can see where we got stopped out almost for a tick before price started to reverse. And now if we start to look at key to RSI candles, maybe as our new check or maybe as a new filter on these more aggressive markets, we see the same sort of thing, right? We go from red to then orange to then green, and orange is really where you'd start to then look for an entry where you're already entering into the clouds of the conservative volatility box. And so here you can afford to give it the same sort of stop that you originally had in mind, but all of a sudden now you've bought yourself a bunch of extra buffer room, which keeps you in these sorts of trades and helps you trade with an edge. Also applying the same sort of principle on the gold futures, we'll get back to our aggressive volatility box. And here we see this was our first entry uh, outside of that six to 7 a.m. hour. Typically, we're only looking at gold in these hours, but now if we're trying to find more entries, this would have been that first entry. However, we see these candles stay red, 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 giving us no change and so no real entry. We see it blow right past the aggressive volatility box. Free information once again, switch on over to the conservative volatility box, and all of a sudden then we can see the second time we hit our entry, which is our next opportunity, we go from red to green, which is then our okay to look at this as a valid entry. And we have that next uh, entry when price flushes down, which then gives you a beautiful reversal point in gold for the rest of the day. Right? And this is the power of these models. And this is the power of them layering on maybe one, maybe two indicators, but keeping your chart super clean. And I had a conversation with Ramsey, actually, if you're watching, uh, you and I had a nice uh, back and forth about this today of how keeping our charts clean gives us clarity and clarity gives us then the ability to act and to think clearly and just act uh, with an edge at the edge and just in the direction that fits our trading style the most and let probabilities take care of themselves. We'll also cover the entry in square using our uh, conservative volatility box off of our stock tool. And if we load that in, then we can see that we had our entry as price slammed into our volatility box. And so I said I had some options data around this and uh, let's go through that really quickly. And this will be the last thing we talk about in tonight's video. We had earnings and this is the reason why we were on our conservative volatility box. This populated on our scan and price then started to head up into our clouds. Our entry came as price slammed at the beginning of the volatility box clouds, which is our entry. And our stop was outside of the volatility box. And you can see I had this alert here just in case I hit my stop, uh, which we didn't even come remotely close to hitting. And so my entry was right here. Using Keats RSI candles, we can once again see that same sort of thing, yellow to green to red, then giving you permission. And you almost had a better entry using that in the clouds. We ended up buying the 66 strike put options and these were at the money with eight days to expiration and we bought these for a dollar 40. and if we take a look at sort of what happened as price started to fluctuate and uh, we had this slight move up higher and in this slight move up higher we went from a dollar 40 and we were down ten dollars and so the price of the option had decreased to a dollar uh, 30 and then as we had this follow through in this first flush when we had just 44 cents we were up to $1.57 in our option, so we were up $17 profit. And then at the end of this candle, so this was the first flush, we were up $27. And so this option was now worth $1.67. And then when we finally ended up hitting our target, which is this dashed line right here, the option was worth $1.95, which is when we then sold it. And so that was a 39% gain. And for those of you that like to scale out of your positions, buy multiple contracts, so on and so forth, as we then continue to have a flush down lower, you had almost close to 100% gain, if not there. Last I checked, I think I saw the option trading for uh, $2.31, might be even lower now. And that's sort of the power, right? We got in at $1.40, and less than 40 minutes later, we've targeted out for 39%. 
And then the rest of the day is helping us get to almost 100% gain in the options that we've taken in a move where we're fading the actual movement of stock. And we're doing this at levels where we have used sophisticated models to give us very concrete price edges that give us an edge. And we can start to look at these options with confidence, right? And this is if you like to trade options, you could also short the stock and you could have also gone long the stock, or you might be looking at, say, going long the stock and buying a put to avoid having to short shares if that fits your trading style a little bit better. And so with our scans, we've been finding that we've had almost at least one entry every single day this week, if not multiple, and almost all of those entries have been consistent winners for us, right? We're looking at entries between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m., and then outside of that, it's just information for us. And so hopefully you can start to see how you can use a volatility box in conjunction with maybe uh, one or two other indicators. Our current favorite right now is Keats RSI Dynamic Color Indicator, which for all volatility box members, we've made it available to you. If you'd like a copy, just send us an email and we'll send you the link for the study. Uh, but really the two of those combinations have started to give us some really nice aggressive entries in markets where we typically don't have entries. Uh, same thing happened in copper, you can take a look. And we are also getting confirmation in things that are otherwise tricky to trade things like the 30-year bonds. So I'm really liking this patterns. We'll take a look to see if these uh, continue to exist and uh, repeat themselves, in which case they'll make our trade plan. But for right now, we're studying this, and this is something that has worked out uh, so far this week very, very well. As a heads up, tomorrow I will not be trading, so make sure you hold down the markets. I'll see you in tomorrow's nightly update, um, but just keep in mind that any trades tomorrow that we talk about with the volatility box are not actual entries that I got filled on. All right, with that, we hope you all have a wonderful night. Good luck trading tomorrow. Stay safe on a Friday, and we'll see you in tomorrow's nightly update.